All right, guys, welcome uh, to tonight's call, which is all about the cash buyer data feed and maximizing your results with that system so you can start doing more deals uh, with cash buyers. Now, my name is Josh Brown, and uh, I'm excited to have you here tonight because I love the opportunity to teach and share uh, from my investing experience uh, and my experience with Camera Direct over the last going on four plus years um, so that you can better your business. And that's what tonight's all about, bettering your business. Now, I start every presentation I do uh, with a slide of my family, and the reason I do that is because I want you to know who I am and where I come from, um, and, and more specifically, where I'm coming from in terms of uh, my perspective. Um, you know, My family is my why. They're the reason that I do what I do, they're the reason that I get up in the morning, they're the reason I'm on the phone with you right now to try to train you and help you. Um, and I th I'm a firm believer that you know if you can encapsulize your why, the reason that you're here tonight. We all have a reason, right? We all have a reason that we're here tonight. And it's not just to make money. We all want to make money. That's fantastic. But there's a bigger purpose. There's a bigger reason. You want to make money so that you can blank, so that you can pay off debt, so that you can send your kids to college, so that you can send your daughters to private school. Whatever the reason, you've got a purpose. You've got a why. And I've been able to sort of dial my why down into one simple picture and you're looking at it everything i do in life is for this these three girls and i am the luckiest man on earth uh to be able to just sit next to them and call them my daughters and my wife i'm so lucky for that and uh and and i i would challenge you that if you haven't sat down and really thought about why are you here what's the reason that you're striving so hard for success what is that reason is it your wife, your husband, your kids, your family, or maybe it's you. Maybe you just want money so bad. You know, whatever the reason, there's no wrong answer, but you have to know what the answer is. And I'm a firm believer that if you look at that answer every day, you look at the reason why, then when something comes up that's hard or not so comfortable or it's going to take a little extra work, that why is the thing that pushes you over the edge. It pushes you towards success. My family is what what's done for me. You know, I knew – when I was 16 years old and I met my wife, uh, I, I remember two weeks after I met her, again, 16 years old, I knew this is the girl I'm going to marry. Now, you may think that's crazy. A lot of people called me crazy then. Of course, I didn't tell her that. But as I tell the story, people are like, man, you were crazy. It, I knew it. I knew it deep in my heart and my soul. I just knew it. This was the girl that I was going to make my wife one day. And we started dating high school and boom. Now we're years and years and years from that and still together. And uh, I just knew it. And so, you know, every decision since then has been, how can I, you know, prop this woman up? How can I prop this family up? And how can I better our situation? And it's, so every time I come across a tough decision, boom, I look at this picture, I look at them, I think about them, and it makes me say, it's worth it. I'll do the extra hard work. And it doesn't feel like hard work because look what I get to spend time with for doing it. So go find your why. And I promise you, you will not regret it. So before we get started tonight, I do want to get something out of the way. It's the elephant in the room. Everybody's wondering, what are you going to sell tonight, Josh? Well, I have nothing to sell you today. Nothing. I will not sell you anything. You can take that credit card. You can bury it deep down, put it out of the room. There's nothing to buy tonight, period. This is 100% content. I'm sure you're as glad as I am about that. I'm here to help you get the most out of this program so you can do more deals and cash more checks, period. That's what I'm here for. So let's get into it. Now, we will be doing a live Q&A session at the end of this training. Uh, again, I've said this a few times, but if you're just now getting on, I, I've seen the numbers spike up recently in the last minute or two. Uh, if you want to submit your questions through the question bank, go ahead and start getting them in now. I will get to them in a first-come, first-served basis tonight. We'll get through all your questions, uh, no matter how long it takes. Uh, and so go ahead and put them in there. Don't wait until the end to stick them in. If you've got them now, put them in and just put them in as they come to you, and we'll, we'll get to them as we can. Now, the cash buyer data feed gives you unparalleled access to new and verified cash buyers each and every month. But it also gives you members-only website with access to marketing tools, documents, and telephone script, uh, access to over 200,000 new cash buyers across the United States. Uh, we even highlight which buyers have closed on multiple transactions, so you easily know who the big-time players are. Now, that's key. That's something that's really important. Uh, and I'm going to show you later on, we do a live walkthrough, how I find those people and why I focus on them first. Uh, you also get access to an automated mail manager, 
So with a click of a button, you can easily send out mailings without leaving your office, without, I said, I was joking around, I posted on Facebook, if I have to jump on the phone, teach a couple hundred investors how to find cash buyers without taking their slippers off. Uh, and that's the truth. With Cash Buyer Data Feed, you can literally, from your desk, find cash buyers, click a few buttons, and start driving cash buyers to your business, to your website, to your phone, whatever it is. You could send out mailings without leaving your desk using the Cash Buyer Data Feed. So now I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, getting started with the Cash Buyer Data Feed is, is easy, and logging in is even easier. For every service you've ever had through CameronDirect.com and our company, Cameron Direct. You're going to go to realestatewealthnetwork.com to log in. Now, if you've ever logged in to one of our services, you know that. You go to Real Estate Wealth Network, you put in your username and pass, you can see it right there. You click on log into dashboard, and boom, it logs you into a dashboard that looks just like this. Now, if it's been a while since you've logged in, uh, we've been updating things. As you can see, we've really been working hard. Our programming team is top notch to say the least. Uh, and if you guys have ever been to one of our live events, you've met some of those folks who are part of our our programming team and you know just how smart they are we're really proud of them and uh, they're all in-house american american made <laughs> american paid uh, workers and we're really really proud of them they've worked hard to make our systems work better and better for you every single day that's what they do that's their job uh, and as you log in here so as soon as you logged in you can see on the left uh, i my account has access to a bunch of stuff but one of those things circled in red there is the cash buyer data feed and if you want to open up the Cash Buyer Data Feed, we, we allow you to log in and access our Cameron Direct dashboard. I'm air quoting there. And what we sort of did this for was because we wanted to give you, the customer, an easy place to access all of the tools and resources that we have to offer within one simple, easy to log in place. So you don't have to remember a password for, you know, private lender, a password for vacant house, a password for unlimited skip rates, and a password for iFlip. Instead, you just have one password, and once you're in, you can access all these. So what will happen is once you're inside the system, you just click on Cash Buyer Data Feed right there. And when you do, it auto-logs you in to the main page of the Cash Buyer Data Feed. And at the top of that page, you're going to see this screen right here. It's a map. It's preloaded with uh, cash buyers from the area in which is your, your, your main search uh, area. Okay. Now... One thing that you'll notice as you start scrolling, and, and we've had this question come up a few times where folks are like, hey, I only see 10 cash buyers. Does that mean that in the Seattle area here in this example, there's only 10 cash buyers? And the answer is no, that is not what that means. Uh, but we've designed the system so that as you scroll down in the system, more and more cash buyers will show. And the reason you have to scroll down is because we only load 20 at a time. Uh, records or contacts. And the reason we do that is because if you live in an area with, let's say, 40,000 cash buyers, it could take your site minutes and minutes and minutes to load. Instead, we want it to give you a really quick load time. And as you scroll down, the next 20 will load instantly. The next 20 will load instantly, instantly. So it's more of a user uh, experience issue than it is our ability to give it to you. We could totally do it. It's just it would slow down your experience. We want you to get the stuff fast and and that's why we do it that way. So if you're looking for more, you simply scroll down and 20 will load. Every time you scroll, you'll get 20 more and 20 more. And then you look at the map and there'll be a bunch more on there. You also, with the map, have the ability to zoom in uh, and see where the buyers are, where the cash buyers are in your area. You can see here we're zoomed in on the Seattle area. And I can see that around Newcastle or Mercer Island or, uh, you know, Lake <laughs> Samish State Park. There's a ton of little cash buyers here and there. And I can click on the actual cash buyer property right there and I can see it was purchased for what amount, what the address was, the person's name. Uh, and right there you'll see the file folder, the bookmark, and the print button. And those three buttons you're going to see a lot throughout the system. But those buttons will let me, the file folder will show me the data on this cash buyer. The, the bookmark will save this cash buyer to a, to a list, and the print button will print uh, a short uh, information sheet on this cash buyer. If you're the kind of person who, uh, frankly, I was up until a couple years ago, where I'd print out 100 sheets of paper and then literally just go through and call them, you know, one by one by one. I needed the paper in my hands to feel like I was actually doing anything. If you're that way, you can still print that stuff. Or if you want to print really good ones, one-click print right here, and it prints your lead straight to your printer, uh, which is really helpful. Now, within the Cash Buyer Data Feed, you can choose filters. Just like all of our, our data feeds, you can choose filters to fit your needs. So 
Uh, if you're looking for uh, folks who have done multiple transactions, or maybe you're looking for folks who haven't done multiple transactions, and there are reasons why, uh, you can exclude them. Uh, if you want to include or exclude uh, LLC, Inc., or Corpse that may have funded properties right there, or sorry, uh, purchased property for cash. Um, if you want to include or exclude one-time buyers, private buyers, no phone numbers, and that's key, and I'll show you in a bit why that's really important. Um, you can use our additional filters to scroll on purchase price. So from the left, you could scroll up to at least 100,000. From the right, you could scroll down from 10 million to 1 million, and you can sort of pick your zone that you're looking to invest in or, or that you're looking for cash buyers for, sorry. Uh, market value, if you're looking for houses that were within a certain range, square footage, same thing, bedrooms, bathrooms, the exact same. And then uh, you can search by site, address, mailing address, or both. And you can click search, and it'll uh, pull up all the cash buyers that meet your requirements right there within the system. Uh, and then you can start reviewing leads. And that's the great thing about the system is it's instant search, instant review. I mean, it's right there from your desktop. You don't have to wait for someone to deliver a report to you. Uh, it just you start right away. Uh, and once you've run a search, you can save all the cash buyer leads you're interested in and working on, uh, which allows you to obviously organize those leads uh, easily. And sorry, I get a little water there. Uh, what you can see here is what shows below the main map. So I couldn't get it all in one screenshot. So this is the bottom part. And you'll see on the left, we've again got the file, file folder, the save and the print. But then you can see the cash buyer's name, the phone number if it exists. And we're able to get the phone number a lot of times. Um, not every time, but a lot of times we're able to get the phone number for those cash buyers. And again, it's not whether or not we're working hard to get it. It's whether or not it's reported to us or not. And if it is reported, we will include it there for you because it can make your job easy. And here's why. So um, if you think about it, uh, you're really <laughs> – when I started investing, I started when I was 18 years old. It's 1998 or 99, maybe early 1999. And back then, this system and any of the systems that we've got did not exist. So the way that I found cash buyers then was to set up reverse bandit signs to go to my RIA and beg people if they knew anybody was looking for properties. You know, it was the old school waves. And by the way, those still work today, but they're not as easy as this. If I had this system back then, man, forget about it. So what I would do is like, let's say I had a property to sell, I'd log into this program and I would come in here and I'd search in the area that my property existed in. Uh, and I would say, look for cash buyers in say Atlanta, city of Decatur. Boom. I'd search for all the cash buyers in that area. And then if I had the budget and didn't have the time or the desire to get on the phone, I could just pull everybody within that area. I could select them all right here, save them all. I'd save them by clicking that little bookmark button. And then I'd go up to select from the following and I'd send them a direct mail piece that says, hey, I have a property you'd be interested in. Give me a call. And I'm going to show you how to do that later. All right? But but literally within five minutes of getting a property under contract, I could do that instantly. And I'm, now I'm starting to generate buyer uh, interest within five minutes. That's powerful. But let's say you're on a shoestring budget and you don't want to send direct mail or you don't have time or you don't have the desire for some reason uh, you can actually filter to only show you cash buyers with phone numbers. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a little bit. And then what you have there is a list of people who've proven their ability to pay cash for properties and their phone numbers. So you can instantly start calling them up and saying, hey, I've got a cash uh, property for sale. It's a great deal in that area. Would you be interested in buying it? You know, and you've were talking to someone who's already proven to be a cash buyer. Plus, we give you a script to follow. So it's easy to use. It's step by step and it's proven. It's the same script that Cam's used over and over and over again in this business. Now, once you click on that file folder in the far left, the light blue image, it's going to pull up something like this, which is your property lead information or your buyer cash buyer lead information. And what you're going to see here is you're going to see a photo of the property. And now these photos are from Google. You can see right there. Uh, these are from Google. And so they're as good as Google is. Uh, but usually it's pretty good. It gives you an example of the property, lets you see about what it looks like. And this is good enough for me. I can see that that's a single family home. Uh, it looks like something that might exist in Seattle. Uh, if you've ever been there, uh, cash buyer, you have a name there, Elizabeth C. Blackman, uh, mailing address, a phone number, which is great. A street address, uh, of the property, uh, bedrooms, bathrooms, two, two, 605 square foot. 
pretty small. Year built 1987. But look at that transfer value, 336500 and assessed value, 227 We'll get to the difference between those two uh, numbers here in a minute. Uh, and, of course, you could always save the lead. So if I see this and I'm like, this is the type of person I want to go after to see if they want to buy my property, I could click Save Lead. Uh, or I could click Load Map, and by loading the map, it would show me um, show me what uh, where they're at, and I could do a little more research. But as you can see here, they, it's got all the information you need, phone numbers, transfer value, all that stuff. And when you click load the map, it pops up right here. It lets you easily research the area and see exactly where it is. Now, this is important because as you start to dig in, you might say, oh, this is not the area I want to be in. Or this is, yeah, this is exactly, my house is two blocks over and one block down. Like, you can see exactly the area you're in. And that's really good when you can see that there's cash buyers within that area. The other cool thing you can do is you can zoom out with that minus button right there and start seeing the cash buyers in and around your house or your property that you're trying to sell. So I like that because if I see a bunch of cash buyers there, I know that there's probably a lot of demand for property there. And it sort of is a hint to me, hey, go after that. That's a place to be. Now, uh, in my saved leads, you can save the leads you want to market to or are working on. And um, once you've saved them, you'll find them in my saved leads. And you can scroll, work on them. You can click on them with that, that open box there on the far left that you see where the first four of them right now are clicked. Um, if you unclick it, it'll take it off the map. And if you click it, it'll put it back on the map. It sort of pins it to the map when you click it, which is nice because if you're looking at going after 25, 50, a hundred different cash buyers, you can see sort of the area in which you're going after by pinning them all to the map. It's really nice. Uh, and with my labels, you can now easily track specific mailings and keep better tabs on your leads. This is a new feature that we've added, and what it allows you to do within My Save Leads is create labels. So you may have a hot buyers list. So the people who've purchased more than one property in your area in the last 120 days, maybe they go on your hot buyers list versus your you create a new label called regular buyers list. And what that allows you to do is focus on one list versus the other and segment. And as a marketer, I got to tell you, nothing gets me more excited than being able to segment my list because I can save money that way. I can also focus in. For instance, let's say you add 25 hot buyers on your hot buyers list and 200 buyers on your regular buyers list. Your hot buyers are proven to be better cash buyers, right? So when you get a property on a contract, if you want to save money and not waste time, uh, you might go after just the hot buyers first. So you might send out a mailing to just your hot buyers list. Uh, and if you don't get a response or you don't get a buyer within the mailing them, then you go back out to the regular buyers list. But what you're doing is you now have the ability to segment. It gives you power uh, in your business uh, that we didn't used to have. We didn't used to have the ability to segment those buyers like this. But you can create as many labels as you want. You can create labels for different areas. If you're one of the uh, many folks who are part of our programs who um, invest in multiple markets like Cam. Cam has a California buyers list. He has a New York buyers list. He has a Florida, couple of different Florida buyers lists. And, North Carolina buyers list, and you can separate them all here within your labels. So it makes it really, really useful. Uh, when you're inside my account, uh, you can customize your setup. Now we're going across the top. So that first page we were on was the search page. The last page we were on was my save leads. And now you're under my account. Uh, and in my account, you can do things like change your profile, edit your default search. And by the way, your default search will be uh, the, the city and state in which, uh, and counting, I guess, in which you want your first search to happen every time you log in. That's changeable. You can change it every time. Um, I would say make your main uh, area your default search. Um, but you can always go up and change it too right there on the search screen. This is just sort of making it easy on you so you don't have to put it in every time. It just automatically searches wherever your default search area is for you instantly. Uh, if you've ever downloaded anything, you've downloaded a list of cash buyers. Uh, if you paid the annual fee and you, you have the, the rights to download, you can do it there. Uh, and then alerts. This is something new you can set up, which I love. You can set up the ability to add alerts uh, to your system so that you're alerted every time new cash buyers with certain parameters are added. For instance, you can say in this one you hear, in the county of Broome, in the city of Binghamton, Anybody who's multiple transaction LLC, Inc. or Corps, one-time buyer, private buyers, no phone number, still, you know, his purchase price is between zero and whatever, blah, 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 blah. I want to be updated. So you could say, update me when someone who spent three to $500,000, who isn't a first-time buyer, who blah, 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 right? And 
why that's helpful is because it instantly lets you know when they go in the system, the faster you are to respond to them, the more likely you are to be the first person to contact them. And that's always a good thing. Um, but I love getting these updates. You can get them sent to your email. You can get them sent to your phone via text alerts. I do both. I've covered them up for my privacy. <laughs> but uh, you can see there how we've done it. The task tab, uh, one of my favorites. I found out long ago that if I don't task something, uh, I will forget it, period. Um, I'm a habitual user of Google Calendar. And uh, it looks and acts a lot like this tasking system does where you can put it in the task name, you can pick a start and end date, you can put notes about it, you can set a reminder, you tell it when to update you, you can choose email or SMS text reminders, and you can add that task to the system. Now, um, this does not interact with Google uh, Calendar yet, but we're working on that. Um, so as we make those updates, and by the way, I'm going to tell you about a couple of really exciting updates we've made to the system today uh, over the last few weeks, and there's a couple more coming um, that are even more exciting. So stay tuned, but we're always making improvements. We're not like some giant, you know, uh, software conglomerate that updates their software every four years. We, we literally want to hear your feedback and many of the things you're seeing in this version of the cash by data feed are from people like you who've said, it'd be nice if, if only this could blank. And then we were like, yeah, that, that's a great idea. And in our next meeting, Cam, myself, Justin, we talked to our programmers, and the next thing you know, it's in there. So we're always looking for your feedback, and I'll show you later on where you can give us that feedback, the constructive uh, feedback, so that we can uh, we can continue to make the system better and more specific to what it is you need in your business. Uh, under marketing tools, one of my favorite tabs, you can choose who you want to market to and how you want to market to them. So once you're in here, uh, you'll see that there's templates, phone scripts, mailing lists that you can access, uh, marketing history, direct mailers, labels and envelopes, heat maps. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through some of these in a second, but this is everything to do with marketing, whether you wanna do uh, some competitive research under the heat maps, you wanna do your own mailings where you go labels and envelopes, uh, direct mailers where you wanna mail out postcards or letters to a list of people, uh, marketing history, what did you send last month? Who did you send them to? That's where you'd find that. Mailing lists, you can go look at the, your save lead list so you know who you're going after as you create a mailing lists. Phone scripts, if you're new, if you're old and forgot, if uh, you just need to brush up on some strategies on how to talk to cash buyers, we've got phone scripts in there for you to follow. Uh, and then templates, which I'll show you here in a second. So as you get started, you're gonna have a choice. If you click on templates, you gotta choose between, uh, and I just went to letter templates here, you have two choices. You can either start with a pre-done template or you can create a new template over there on the right. Okay, most start with pre-done templates. But if you want to create your own new template, go for it. If you know exactly what you want yours to look for and you've tested it, click on the green button. If you want to look at one of Cam's pre-done templates, you click on the blue link right there. It says click to preview. And when you do, it's going to go to a site that looks like this loads a bunch of templates and you can see postcard templates there's a few letter templates there's a few and by the way we're trying to always add new templates to the system uh, but here's how it works so you're looking through and you're trying to figure out which template you might want to see and you see there's two buttons there's view and copy to my templates so if you want to view one you simply click on the view button when you do it'll pull up the a little modal window and show you what that piece or postcard or template or letter is going to look like uh, it's a preview now as you can see here it says call now sender phone sign up as a vip buyer to view all our deals at sender website now when you use the built-in mail manager or the self mailer it's going to auto merge sender phone sender website with your information it's going to auto merge sender name street address all that stuff with your information and then of course the buyer information it auto merges it right in dynamically uh, so you don't have to worry about any of that Okay, but here you can see exactly what it looks like. If you like it, you hit back, and then you can click copy to my templates right there next to the template you wanted, and you can start sending out the mailing right there and then. All right, now we have different letters, different postcards within the system. Here's just a couple examples of, of some of the stuff in there. Uh, these, again, these are all templates that Cam has used in his business over and over and over again. Uh, and customers have been absolutely loving the new and improved cash bar data feed uh, for many of the reasons that we've talked about already, but one of the biggest benefits of using uh, the system is the built-in mail manager uh, because of the ultra-low cost 
that we're able to pass on to you from our mail house. Now, one thing that we've done is negotiated with a mail house uh, for national delivery of postcards and letters, uh, and they've given us a great rate, and we literally pass that rate on to you. We don't profit on it at all. It's hands off for us. Uh, all we do is facilitate you ordering it, pass it on to them, and that's it. And we actually uh, had one person write us a little bit ago, said I closed a deal in two weeks. This is the best program ever I joined on with your trial offer two weeks ago and closed the deal today with one of the cash buyers I found on your list. I can believe, I can't believe how easy this was. Off to find my next deal. And that is literally how easy it can be uh, if you've got a deal to sell, even if you don't. You know, a lot of folks that I talk to as we travel around and we do events and I'm training investors uh, on this business, they'll say, you know, I, I want to go out and market for deals, but I won't have anybody to buy it if I start getting deals. Or I'm worried that I won't be able to get it sold, so I'm not really making offers, uh, you know, like I should be. And in fact, I've heard Cam say, you know, one of the biggest uh, dream killers in this business is that folks will wait to create their buyers list until they get a deal, and then they're afraid to go make a deal because they don't have a buyers list. I mean, if you think about that, it's it's so easy to get caught in that trap. And what I can tell you is if you're on this call, you either have or had access to cash buyer data feed, or you can go get it again. Go sign up for the trial. Uh, go to cash and get started right now. Uh, and you'll have access for 30 days to these cash buyers. Go find that buyer, do a deal and you'll make 10 years worth of your membership fee uh, to the site easily. Okay. So it really can't be that easy. You just got to do it. Now, we're doing everything we can to make your job easier within the system. We're creating the buyer scripts and some of the cash buyer information, which you'll get through the system, also includes phone number data. And it's important to make a good first impression when calling these buyers. Obviously, you don't want to sound like you've never done this before. And what we do is now giving you access to a phone script for contacting cash buyer leads so that you don't sound like a quote unquote newbie or like this the first time you've been on the phone. The script is designed to help you easily walk through talking to these folks uh, so that you sound like a pro. Um, and it's designed to give you a good reason to be calling your prospective cash buyer. A lot of folks feel like, well, why am I calling them? You know, this feels weird. And what our script does is allows you to uh, sort of give them that natural free flowing conversation. Um, and one thing I do want to point out when you read this script, it will talk about, uh, you know, you asking them if they'd be interested in selling their property that they just purchased with cash, which is your reason for calling by the way, but you don't actually have to buy that property. However, approaching the cash buyer this way allows you to have them drop their guard and prove to them that you're an actual investor and not a tire kicking newbie. Because trust me, uh, the scariest thing to a tire kicking newbie is offering to buy a property from somebody knowing deep down in their heart they could never actually buy it. Um, but you're going to ask them straight up front and the script will walk you through everything right there, how to get through it. But you're going to ask them, would they be interested to sell it? Now they just bought this property. Chances are they're buying it to rehab turn around and, and flip, they're not going to want to sell it to you for what you're willing to pay for it. But by having this conversation, you're proving to them that you're the real deal and you're now able to put this cash buyer on your list or sell them that next property you've got. The cash buyer data feed is an automated solution. And it is a solution, I explained this earlier, that literally takes hours and hours and hours away from you having to go to RIAs to find buyers, having to do the old school bandit sign method, having to, you know, get out there and network at every single one of these events just to find one buyer, having to go to cl different places uh, to to um, find those people paying cash, auctions and whatever. Uh, it, this takes all that away and it gives you a one-stop shop for finding cash buyers from the comfort of your desk. Uh, it's one of the least expensive, high quality cash buyer lead sources available to investors. I've not seen a, a more or a less expensive version uh, with as many bells and whistles as this system has, period. And we're constantly enhancing it and becoming more powerful every single day. For example, one of the enhancements we've made recently to uh, many of our systems is the heat maps. Now, the all new heat maps feature within the cash buyer data feed will now allow you to do some advanced market research that your competition just cannot get access to. It's plain and simple. Most of your comp competition cannot go and look nationwide at where all the cash buyers are buying properties. They can't do it, but you can. So to access that system, you're going to log in, you're going to go to marketing tools. And once in there, you click on marketing tools, 
and you'll go down to heat maps at the very bottom. And you saw this earlier when I was showing you where marketing, where marketing tools was. And once you're in heat maps, you click on it. It's going to pull up uh, the heat maps, which allow you to research your local market. Now, when it does pull up, you're going to have to select the state and the county that you want to search. But you can do this right with them. Let's say I lived in Washington, Seattle County, in Washington State. Um, and the second I pull it up, it'll show me where the cash buyers are. And you can see right here, a ton around Tacoma, uh, a couple hot spots around Olympia, uh, around Spokane County, uh, unless that's something else. Uh, Kennewick, Walla Walla, down here you can see Yakima. It's got some little hot spots in and around there. So what I'm seeing is if I'm an investor and I'm looking and where should I be looking for properties uh, to buy – I'm probably going to start looking in areas where there's a lot of cash buyers because I know that I have buyers there ready, willing, and able to start spending money on something that I'm trying to sell. I want to find something within that area. Okay. And of course, it's important to note uh, a lot of folks will look at this system and go, what does red mean? What does yellow mean? What's green mean? Well, it's just like a, a, a storm um, graph. You know, green means light rain, red means thunderous downpour. So here, green means low density, yellow means medium, and then as you get hotter and redder, it means higher density. So there's a higher density of cash buyers in that area, uh, and that's why when you're zoomed out like this, you see it red, yellow, green, just like that. And you can zoom in on your local markets. As you can see, I zoomed in on Seattle, and you can see that there's pockets within pockets. So from back here, <clears throat> excuse me, it, it just looks like one red around Tacoma, right? And then that whole area includes Seattle. It's just one red dot. But as we zoom in, we can see that it's not necessarily one red dot. Once you zoom in, you can see in and around north of Seattle there where it's hot. You can see there's pockets like around Kent. There's a bright red pocket right there, which it, that might be a 10 by 20 mile area. Um, but if I live in and around Kent, I'm like, OK, well, there is some areas in and around me where the density of cash buyers is pretty high. Uh, so, again, in and around Redmond, you can see the spots where cash buyers are high. And this is, again, this is Intel that I would have paid big, big, big bucks for on top of just getting access to cash buyers, but you guys get it uh, for free as part of the system. Uh, and where this really helps you out is if you're one of those investors who wants to step outside of your local market or is forced to, you know, if I grew up, well, I was born in Iowa and did my first stint in life in Iowa. Uh, and if I wanted to invest in Iowa, uh, there's only about two cities that are big enough and wild enough that I would be able to keep busy. Uh, otherwise, I need to start looking outside of my 2,000 person town in Iowa. So I would come here and I'd start researching different areas. For instance, let's go to Texas, right? So I selected Texas. Let's go look and see what that looks like for them. And boom, you can see 27,640 cash buyers in the state of Texas right now. Uh, and I can see where they're located in and around Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, Fort Worth, but nothing surprised there, Austin, uh, and then Round Rock. You can see the little tiny hot pocket there. Uh, but I can also see San Angelo. There's a decent little action over there. Abilene, um, Tyler, Texas. I think there's a college. There's colleges in every town in Texas it's about, but you can see that. So this is good intel. If I'd never been to Texas, but I want to see where cash buyers are buying, and I want to start sending out mailers to uh, – to leads from Texas, then these are the areas that I'd want to focus on. If I'm going to go to one of our other products, which is the vacant house data feed, and I want to pull all the leads within the vacant house data feed that are in Houston, I can mail them, find a deal. Once I get the deal, I'd come to the cash buyer data feed and find the buyer. And with those two programs, I'm going to find the deal, find the buyer, do the closing, and get paid. We have that happen every single day within our with our company from our students. So. It's totally possible, and it's something that now with this ability to do this research is totally probable for you too. Plus, we just introduced the custom mailing labels for the self-mailing solution, which allows you, if you're the type of person who likes to do everything yourself and or you're doing less than 50 mailers at a time, uh, you're going to use the self-mailer system, which is inside the labels and envelopes. Uh, we had a lot of people asking over time, you know, I'd like to be able to customize these labels, uh, change the colors, change the fonts. So now you can do that. Uh, you can select the actual Avery label that you use if you're self-printing. Uh, and if you click that little drop-down tab there, it'll pull through every different type of Avery label by its number. And you can search to find the exact one. And it's smart enough to just print it how it should print it on your printer. Um, you can select font colors, font types, all that stuff. Uh, and uh, make it 100% custom so that you're able to 
test and tweak on this stuff too as you're doing your mailings and generate your labels. So now that we've gone through some of the most important features of the Cash Buyer Data Feed, we've walked you through the system, through all the tabs. Oh, and one important thing to point out. Um, I've, I've talked about recording this presentation. We are recording it. And as long as nothing goes wrong, we'll be putting this recording out uh, to you guys. But we'll also be adding it to the system and we'll add it to another tab at the top of the page to go along marketing tools and my save leads and search. And it'll save video training. And you'll be able to watch this training anytime you want from right within there. Uh, because you're going to want to go through it. Become an expert at this. Become an expert at the business and every little aspect of it, at finding buyers, at finding leads, at negotiating. Become an expert at all the little things. And that's how you really dial your business up to the next level. So um, now that we've gotten through some of the most important features, let's get to some of your questions. Feel free to submit your questions through the chat feature on the screen. Again, you go to the little tab that says questions with the arrow next to it right there on the GoToWebinar screen. Uh, click it. Type in your question. I'm sure we already have tons in there now. I'm going to see if I can get my mouse to work and go over and look at it. Oh, yeah. We've got tons. That's great. So I'll get to those here in a second. Uh, and keep them coming in, by the way. Love to answer your questions, and I'll stay here as long as you have great questions to ask. I'll answer them. Uh, but I obviously know that a bunch of you are going to ask the same questions. I've gone ahead and put those on the screen, so let's go ahead and get to it. Question, is there a training that will show me how to get from A to Z, finding the deal, locating my buyer with the cash buyer data feed, to getting the check at the closing table? We get this question a lot uh, within the system. People will write in because they've only got access to, let's say, the vacant house data feed, which is your access to vacant house leads across the country. And they'll say, hey, great that you show me how to find the lead, but how do I know how to negotiate the deal, find the buyer, find the private lender, blah, 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 blah. Or I have the cash buyer data feed, great, but how do I find more leads so that I can sell these to cash buyers? Uh, well, we do have a way for you to learn how to do that from A to Z, and it is our Vacant House and Foreclosure Summit. I cannot tell you how uh, powerful that three-day training is. Uh, we've had multiple students. I, I, a lot of the names that I'm seeing on the call tonight, as you guys are on, have been to one of those trainings. You know just how powerful it is and how much actionable content is shared at those things. Uh, so if you've never been to one of our three-day events, I highly suggest you go. Again, it's called the Vacant House and Foreclosure Summit. Uh, if you want to sign up for a free ticket, you can go to timewithcam.com uh, and register. Now, we are doing our next one. It's coming up in just a few weeks. It's going to be uh, uh, it's going to be sold out soon. You're going to want to go ahead and go to timewithcam.com right now and register your free seat. Again, this is free. It's not paid. Uh, what you get when you attend are three days that will absolutely change your life. And I'm part of the, the crew that shows up and helps train you guys. It's But it's three days with Cam. It's three days with Cam and his team, no outside speakers, no, you know, cell phone type stuff. It's just Cam, three days working on your business and working on what's working now. Uh, this event was designed to teach you exactly how to use tools like the vacant house data feed, cash buyer data feed, and start doing more deals fast uh, in today's market. You know, one of the things that uh, really sets Cam and our, our business apart is that he's an active investor every day. He's doing deals. And we're able to take the lessons and the strategies that he's using right now and transfer them over to you instantly. So there's no gap in between sort of what's working now and what you're receiving in terms of content. In fact, um, a lot of the stuff that I see these days people sell on is stuff that worked 10 years ago or stuff that you know isn't fully vetted out. But the only thing you'll learn from Cam is how he's doing deals and how you can start following his footsteps of this three-day event. It is not your average event. I've been to hundreds of these things and I can tell you that uh, the level of care, the level of attention to detail, information, and general awesomeness is just higher when you come to these things. It is really good. And yes, Cam actually shows up to the event, not some junior coach or hired sales guy. It's you and Cam together for three life-changing days. That's it. You and Cam together. So if you want to learn how to take your business to the next level, if you're struggling, if you're in that sort of stuck in a rut phase in your business. And look, we've all been there. It's okay. Uh, but if you're stuck in that phase, you know, one thing I want to ask you is when is enough enough? When is now going to be the time that you decide enough is enough? I'm going to take it to the next level. I'm going to put in the work. I'm going to put in the elbow grease it takes to make this business successful. And if you're willing to do that, then darn it, you're the kind of person we want at our event to spend three days with us because we keep them small. It's very intimate. We have a lot of fun. And uh, we do VIP dinner, and it, it really is a great time 
And if you want to go, you can go to timewithcam.com. Again, it's free. The only thing we ask is you put up a seat deposit, and that just lets us know that you're actually going to show up because we spend a lot of money on uh, making sure this event is VIP and top-notch. And you can ask anybody who's been. Uh, it really is special. Uh, but that seat deposit is returned the second you show up, uh, and it costs you nothing to go. So you have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain. And, and uh, if, if you are even at all unhappy with your business, I would go to timewithcam.com. Write that down right now. You don't have to go there the second if you don't want to. Uh, but it will sell out soon, so I suggest you go tonight. Get the full details on this event. You'll see where it's located. You'll see when, all that stuff. Uh, and join us out there, and I promise you, you will love your business afterwards because you're going to leave with so many actionable pieces of, of uh, content and training that your business will never be the same again. Next question, what do the stars mean? So a lot of people ask, you know, they see the green stars, the yellow stars, what do they mean? Well, if you see a yellow star next to a contact's record, it means that that buyer has purchased two to four properties with cash in the past 120 days. And if you see a green star, that means they purchased five or more properties uh, with cash in the past 120 days. So really, if you see a star, that's good news because it means it's someone who's spending uh, cash on properties and on multiple properties. And when I'm looking for cash buyers, that's something I like to see. You know, if you're, again, on a shoestring budget and you can only spend so much money going out to cash buyers, you're probably more likely to find that cash buyer by going out to folks who've purchased five or more properties or two to four, two to five properties in, in that case. So um, the reason we set those aside and we put little stars is because those are the ones that we in our business see as like flagged. Yes, those are the winners. Let's go out with those first. Um, it doesn't mean the ones without the stars aren't great cash buyers. It just means they haven't purchased more than or between two and four or more than five properties in the last 120 days. They could buy one property every 120 days and they'd only they'd, they'd never have a star, but they're continuing buying property. So don't discount if they don't have a star. But if they do, again, this is just a little bit of a, a competitive edge for you. How often is the cash buyer data feed updated? It is updated weekly. We update this data weekly. It used to be monthly back in the olden days, uh, but now we're able to update this information weekly, which means you get faster access to the information, which means you are now speeding past your competition faster and getting uh, more up-to-date information, which always helps. What is the difference between transfer and assessed value? It's a great question. Well, the transfer value refers to the purchase price of the property the last time it transferred ownership. And a home assessment is the value assigned to your home for the purpose of determining your property taxes. So when you see those numbers within the data uh, on the system, the transfer value was the purchase price at the last time it tra ownership was transferred. And the assessment is what your tax man thinks it's worth. Okay. Why can't I be added to the cash buyer data feed? <laughs> now, we actually get this question quite often and folks will call in and they'll say like, you know, I'm looking for good deals and I would pay cash for properties if they were the right ones. Why can't I add myself to the cash buyer data feed so these people can find me? And the reason is simple. It's because this is not a permanent list. The data sets are only in the system for 120 days and we aren't able to manually add data in because the only way to get on the list is to actually purchase a property with cash and have that reported to public record in an area. So if you want to be added to the list, go buy a property with cash. And if you come back and search for yourself within the next 120 days, guess what you're going to find? Your name and that property right within the list. Uh, and that's really a benefit for you because what that means is you're not getting tire kickers within the list. You're not having people just being able to sign up and say, I'm a cash buyer without proving that they're a cash buyer by actually spending cash on a property. Uh, and I know that for me, you know, when I'm subscribed to a service, I want to make sure that I'm actually getting what I'm paying for. And we don't allow you to add yourself to the cash buyer data feed in that way because we're protecting you, our clients. And I think we're all better off because of it. Now, if you're trying to get in front of folks looking to sell discounted properties, that's probably not the best way to do it. There are two ways that I would suggest. The first is you can go to great house deals online uh, this is a website that we own and manage, uh, but it's also a really good resource for discounted properties all across the USA uh, that you can't find anywhere else. So you can go check out Great House Deals online. We've recently updated it. If you haven't been there in a while, you'll see that it really is kick butt. Uh, and you can list properties on there. You can buy properties from there. 
Uh, you know, you can get notified right there at the top whenever new bargain listings are posted in your area. So you can be instantly notified when someone lists a property for sale in your area that is an uh, investor special. Uh, and you, again, you can do that all at Great House Deals Online, and that costs you a grand total of zero dollars right now to go access. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can use a reverse bandit sign. Now, this is an old school strategy that still works really well. I still see it sometimes every once in a while in my area. I see people doing this. I've done it a bunch of times. Um, but you can actually stick a – go get five or ten bandit signs in the area that you want to start buying houses or where you want to start finding cash buyers. You stick these signs out, and it says investor special, 3-2 fixer upper, 1,800 square foot, must sell now, huge discount, and your phone number. Now, looking at this sign, what type of lead do you think this is going to generate? Is this going to generate someone looking to – sell their house? No. This is going to generate someone looking to buy a house. So it's going to get buyers calling you and they'll call you and say, hey, I just saw your sign for the 3-2 fixer and you'll go, oh, thanks for calling so much. I really appreciate it. We just got this house under contract, but I tell you what, I'd love to uh, add you to my list. So next time, if this house happens to come off, I'd be happy to take it out there and show it to you. Or I can uh, let you know next time I get a great deal. How's that sound? Sure. Go ahead and put me on your list. And now you're starting to build your cash buyers list. You can do it that way too. Now, I like this for building those like very custom, small, but active list of cash buyers. If someone calls you from a sign like this, they're looking to do deals. Uh, and so the cost of getting the sign and putting it up really is worth it when you consider the type of lead you're getting from a sign like this. So there's another option for you too. How can I differ differentiate old leads from new leads? Well, uh, in the system, you have the ability to remove leads from the system. So one of the best ways we've been able to tell folks to do this is after you're done with a lead, you can remove it from your list. And then you'll have literally your list will be pared down to zero and all the new ones will be new leads. Or your list will be pared down to you know a certain amount and you've got labels on them. And all the new ones without labels would be new leads. Uh, so you can do it that way. And of course, within the system, you can easily restore your leads as well. So just because you remove it doesn't mean it's gone for good. It just means it's gone from your view so you can identify the new leads. How do I create a mailing list? Uh, it's really easy within the system. We actually have a few places where you can do that. The first is from the drop-down tab on the right of the main search page. Uh, you can see it says select from the following if you scroll. Select, you can either download, generate mailers, save leads, remove leads, or add recipient to mailing list. So if you're going through and trying to select the people you want to put on a mailing list, you can do it there. Uh, you can also do it from my saved leads by the same dropdown. And you can do it from marketing tools by clicking on create mailing list and going and selecting the people you want to put on your mailing list. Question, where can I find old mailing lists I have created? That's right within marketing tools and right there under mailing lists. You can do it right there. You can see all the different lists. You can see here a test one, Rochester three, how many records are in there. Okay. Where can I find the suggestion box? Well, earlier I was talking to you about uh, ways that you could give us feedback, tell us how we can make the system better for you. And the place you can do that is under the contact tab. Uh, you will see right there our phone number, all of our support staff and information and stuff is there, but also you can submit your feedback to us right there within the suggestion box. Put your name, email, and tell us your suggestion. Hit submit. That email goes directly to the leaders of our organization. It goes to Cam, myself, Justin, our head programmer, and we are able to see these suggestions as they come in and go, yeah, that's a great one. Let's put it on the list. Or now nah, this is like a one-off. I don't think anybody else in the world would want that. Let's hold off on that. So as they come in, we're able to prioritize them and take the ones that are really good and get them done fast. So um, if you have great ideas, submit them there and we will make them come to fruition. Also, uh, you can see here the search across the top, the search area, search, my save leads, my account, tasks, marketing tools, contact. This video will be to the right of contact or to the left of contact probably. In between marketing tools and contact, you'll see uh, a tab that says training video. That's where you'll be able to access this video uh, over and over again so you can make sure you guys are really getting everything you need to be able to use the system properly. How can I change my default search setting? Well, you can do that by going to my account and then going to default search setting right there within the system. And again, I told you about this earlier, but now you can see it. You simply just choose the state and county you want your default search to happen in. Then hit save and the system remembers it. And, you know, if... If, if you have multiple areas that you're investing in, you can't pick the one that is your main area to make your default search setting. 
Uh, but then once you're inside your system, which I'll show you in a second, you can easily change that to any state and city or any area that you want. How do I save leads? Well, there's a couple ways to save leads. Uh, the first way is to use the bookmark from the main page. You can see that bookmark image. Anytime you see that bookmark image, it gives you the ability to save leads. Okay, so you simply click that and it saves it. You can also go to the drop down menu right there within the system and, uh, and choose save leads. And you can also do it from the property details page. So if you clicked the file folder from earlier, let's see, I'll go back. Right here, that file folder in the bottom left, you see in the light blue. If you click that, it's going to pull up a window that looks like this. And from that window, you can click Save Lead or Print. All right, so it's nice and easy, super intuitive. Where and how do I send direct mail out? So that's a great question. Uh, and the way you do that is by going to the drop down menu from the main screen, Generate Mailers. So if you're, you drop down, you selected 50 or 60 different cash buyers you wanted to mail to. You could select generate mailers right there and it would instantly pull up the mail manager and allow you to start. You can also do it from your saved leads. So if you want to use the system, instead of picking them all and doing it from the main screen, you want to go through and review those leads and start saving them to your My Save Leads. Then you can go to your My Save Leads page and generate the mailers from there. Or you can go into marketing tools and do it right from the direct mailer tab. Can I edit the marketing pieces? This is a great question. We get a lot. Yes, you can. All you have to do is click on that little pencil. Uh, button right there next to uh, the mailers and you can do that with postcards you can do it with the letter templates as you can see right there when you click it it's going to open up a small window that will allow you to go in and just customize these pieces and edit them for exactly as you see fit so you can change the wording to better fit your style if for some reason it's not in your style or if you want to add something or take away something that's where you do it where do i find letter and postcard pricing well uh, you'll do that under direct mailers. Now, it's important to note you're only going to see the pricing when you've selected to mail to 50 or more people because you can only do the uh, mailer system with 50 or more pieces. That's just – it doesn't make sense for the, the uh, mail house to do less than 50 pieces at a time. So if you select 50 or more and you hit next, it's going to pull up here and say, hey, would you like to print them and mail yourself or would you like to use the mail manager? Here are the prices below. And it lists right there, and you just select and hit continue. So let's go ahead and log into the system and see it in action. I will. Uh, I'm going to exit out of this if I can here. Let's get my mouse to work. All right. Let's see. And I will show you sort of how I use this system. Over. I got a couple screens here that I'm dealing with, so let me just get it sized right. Thanks for your patience. And again, this is maybe another good time to remind you that you can ask questions. You can go to the question bank, type them in. I apologize if I'm talking fast, but I have like two hours of content that I was trying to squeeze into an hour for you guys, and uh, I've done pretty good. I see that it's 8:57 already, but we will uh, be turned over to your live questions here in just a second. Um, but I wanted to show you sort of this sucker in action. So you can see right here we're in my area in South Carolina, County of Berkeley is where I have it set to, although I invest in Charleston and Berkeley County. So Charleston County runs, if you're watching my hand right here along this area of town, Berkeley County is like way this whole area way up here. Okay. Um, I invest in both. I said Berkeley is my main though. So if I wanted to change that, I could go County, Charleston search and it'll instantly pull it up for me here boom you can see now it's showing me all the houses within charleston county that's you know downtown historic charleston that you might have been to that's charleston county folly beach the beaches all that stuff um and if i wanted to zoom in on those properties i could just hit the zoom if i wanted to see a street map i can click that can drag it in and around if I want to see details on each specific property like this one click on it it's uh, Dan Jarvis purchased 210 key court Charleston for five hundred forty thousand dollars if I click on again three options I can print it to my printer right now I could go ahead and save this to my save leads or I can click on this file folder and by clicking on that it should pull up the details boom you can see the house right there it's a nice looking house 
$540,000 was the transfer value. Uh, assessed value, $16,880. So you can see there's some issue there. It's not always uh, obviously accurate, something with the assessor and the way they're putting that information in. Or that's the assessed value of the lot. Uh, and they just haven't updated yet. Three bedroom, four bath. Uh, but I could see the person who funded this deal was from New Jersey, even though the property's here. I may give them a call and see if they're interested in becoming a cash buyer. Uh, I can also load the map here and see what it looks like right on the map. So from the map, I can sort of see where this house is located. And, you know, from looking at that, I wouldn't be able to tell how close is the water. Here, we are literally one, two blocks off the water. And that has access to the ocean. Uh, so through all these little estuaries, I bet that you can get out there. So that's pretty neat to see. And it's good to know uh, just for, you know, obviously I can learn a little bit about Mr. Jarvis and the type of properties he's willing to buy uh, by looking at stuff that he's already purchased before. All right. Now, a couple of things that are going to be most interesting for you here. The one thing I wanted to show you was uh, sort of if I was on a shoestring budget. And by the way, let me show you. Quickly, you know, when you land on the search page, here's where we're at. And as I scroll down, I'll start to see the different cash buyers listed right within here. So here's all the cash buyers. Boom, yellow star. What's that mean? Two to four properties in the last 120 days. So I keep scrolling down. I'll get more. Another two to four property. Another two to four properties. So these are the ones that are, look at spring, spring. They're buying stuff. Um, Henry Jr., Leonard, Leonard. So again. That's why they're in there twice because he's purchased two different properties uh, in the last 120 days. Stephen Metz. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, oh, a green star. So this person has bought five or more in the last 120 days. That's good to know. And again, if I didn't like some of these for some reason, I could go where I'm done with them, remove the lead from the system. Right. Uh, but you can see there's tons and tons. And as we get to the bottom, that's where I want to show you. doesn't mean we're done. It just has to load more. And as it did, look more green, more yellow. Okay. But let's get to uh, the fun part for me, which is going into the filters. You know, as a marketer, I'm always trying to figure out, you know, you can hunt with a shotgun or you can hunt with a rifle and they're both good at something. You know, a shotgun and a rifle will both kill things, uh, but they're used by two different types of hunters. A shotgun is used by someone who's maybe not as good of a shot. A rifle is used by someone who wants to be more precise uh, and spend less bullets or less money on ammo to kill their target. So I like to hunt with a rifle when I'm going after cash buyers, even when I'm going after leads for my business. And by using these filters, we're able to filter down to exactly what we want. And you can see within the system here, I can pick, this is by the way, if you normally invested in South Carolina, but you're now looking to get into Texas, this is where you change it to state, Texas, county, Dallas, city, whatever, okay? But you can come in here and you can say include or exclude multiple transactions. If for some reason you wanted to exclude those, you could. Uh, if you don't want to buy or see people who are LLCs, Inks, or Corps, you could exclude those. Although a lot of people think like, let me get rid of the banks and the big, you know, whatever. Banks aren't really listed. But uh, get rid of the corporations I'm quoting here. The problem with that is like, you know, my investing business is a one-man show, but I'm a corporation. So you'd be getting rid of me and I'm a good cash buyer. You know what I mean? So you got to be careful when you do that. Uh, you can exclude one-time buyers. if You only want to go after the people who are yellow or green stars who have the most, the highest likelihood of actually purchasing property for cash in that area. Uh, private buyers, if you want to exclude them for some reason, you could. Uh, if you want to exclude the people with no phone number, you could. So let's say I'm on a tight budget and uh, I want to, you know, make sure that I get the biggest bang for the buck and pull the people, uh, get rid of the one-time buyers, but I'm going to sort and leave everything else the same and hit search. So I've got a property to sell. And in Charleston County, I find 28 buyers who've purchased between two, two or, or more, I guess I should say, between two or four or five plus, but two or more properties in the last 120 days, 28 different people. Now, the great thing about that is uh, I can instantly click on all these and then come right over here. So if I wanted to select all, boom, click that button. I've selected them all. Now select from the following, generate mailers. Click on generate mailers and start mailing them right now. I can do it. And they drop in the morning as soon as the mailbox open, right? So I can do that. The other thing I could do is I could go through, and if I want to spend $0 on marketing, I could start calling them right now. 
843. That's a local person. Leonard Lundquist. I can call him right now, 843-637-4236, and say, hey, I've got a property to sell. I saw by way of public record that you buy cash uh, properties for cash in that area. I've got some great deals. Wondering if you'd be interested in the ones I've got for you. And you can follow the cash buyer uh, script and walk right into one, two, uh, sorry, I scrolled down, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine plus different investors without having to wait on either mailings to go to them and have them respond or spend the dollars on doing it. So if you're on a super limited budget and you need to start getting cash buyers for a deal fast, you can come up here and you can sort on, uh, get rid of people who don't have a phone number and just start calling those nine people with phone numbers, right? And that's a pretty big aha for a lot of folks because they think that you can't just do, they can't just call them. Why not? Their number is public record. This is public record. It's not like you had to hijack something to get their information. It's made public. It's just hard to find. So you can come in here, look at the information, give them a call and tell them by way of public record. Go follow the script. Where would you find the script? Marketing tools right here at the top as it pulls up. Phone scripts. And it's right within there. Boom. Copy the phone scripts. Cash buyer phone script. View. Click on it. And you can print it also. So again, we put a note on it. But they, hi there. My name is blank. I'm a local real estate investor. I'm calling today because I was looking at some recent transactions in the area. And noticed that you bought blah, 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 blah. Right? So it walks you right through a simple and easy conversation you can have with those cash buyers to try to get them uh, on your list or to buy your next property. Right? And of course, you can always contact us right through here in the contact tab. And again, this is where you'd put in your suggestions and it preloads your information right here for you. So all you have to do is type the suggestion and send it to us. And as always, at the top of all of our sites, uh, if it's between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 8 p.m., you'll see live support online right here and you can click and live chat with one of our happy American-based uh, customer support reps. All right, so that's basically how you use the system. Uh, you know, everything I showed you inside, it's very simple, uh, but it's also very powerful. And you can, you know, easily start accessing cash buyers nationwide, not just within your area, but nationwide within a few clicks of a button. And that is always awesome stuff. So let's dig into your questions and see what questions you've got for us. Um, I will go there now and see what I can find. So let me get to the top here. Again, if you have your questions, you can go ahead and start popping them in. That'd be great uh, because uh, before too long, we'll have to shut down, but I'm going to try to make sure I get to as many as I can. Um, let's see here. How do you determine whether a property is a fix and flip or a wholesale property? What are the determining factors or thresholds you go by? So um, that question has more to do with sort of like finding the property um, rather than finding the cash buyer. But I will give you a quick answer on that. Uh, I mean, that comes down to sort of learning how to evaluate deals. Uh, that's something that we do talk about at our three day event, uh, the big house foreclosure summit. If you've never been, I strongly suggest Michael, you check out that link time with cam.com um, because I think it'd be a really good value for you. That's what we talk. One of the main things we talk about at that event is sort of, how to evaluate a deal and decide, is it a fix and flip? Is it a wholesale property? Uh, but that'll come down to a couple factors. One, what are you comfortable rehabbing? You know, like, are you good with quick and easy fixer uppers or are you, do you have a construction background or do you have a crew that has a construction background and you're comfortable with a complete gut job? I mean, if I'm looking personally for me, you know, I'm not interested in, uh, Properties are going to take me months and months to complete. I want quick in and outs if I'm doing a fix and flip. So if it's not a quick in and out, that becomes a property I wholesale. Uh, the other thing is, um, do you want small, fast money or big, slow money? And by that, I mean, you know, wholesaling, you're going to give up a lot of the profit to your end buyer. I mean, not your end buyer, sorry, your uh, investor buyer. So you're wholesaling a deal. You're finding the contract and you're wholesaling that contract or the, or the house out. Uh, to that investor buyer, but they're going to need profit in that deal for them to be interested in buying it from you in the first place. So you could either make, and this is just an example, let's say you find a, a house that's worth 200 after repairs, you get it for 100, 
you can either make 10,000 in the next 30 days if you wholesale it, or you could make 30,000 in the next four months if you fix and flip it. So the question is, do you want a little bit extra risk and time involvement to make whatever it was, 30 or 40,000, or would you rather be in and out relatively risk-free for 10,000? It's a personal decision and it comes down to running numbers and understanding the game, which takes a little bit more than what I've got to answer your question here, but I wanted to address it because I think it's really valid. Um, but there are places where you can get those answers from us. And, and uh, again, timewithcam.com, that three-day training might be perfect for that. Um, going through here, a lot of highs. Do you go by? don't know what that means. You've got a no volume, but you're the only person that says I have no volume. So hopefully it was just your speakers were turned down, Teddy, and I hope you're better now. Um, let me read this one. It's a little typed out here. I, I appreciate you guys uh, putting up with me because uh, these questions come in live. Again, I didn't know what they are. I don't know what they are before I read them. Um, Can you export your selected cash buyers in an Excel document to your desktop? The answer to that, Paula, is yes, you can export selected cash buyers, but if and only if you have purchased the annual subscription. And the reason we do that is because you, when you log in and get access, you get access to the entire nation's worth of data. And um, it's literally just a... Uh, uh, We've been gamed a bunch in the past by folks who log in with a trial and then download the entire list, and that's just not fair to us. I think you could imagine. Uh, so what we've done is if you do a year in advance, then you have access to the system for a whole year. You don't have any monthly payments at all, and you can download the data. Uh, if you don't currently have the annual plan, all you have to do is go within the system. Once you're logged into my account, you can upgrade right within there and download, or if you go try to export It'll ask you if you don't have uh, the annual plan, if you want to go ahead and upgrade to the annual plan and do it. Um, it's just that that's the fairest way we could figure out between us and our customers so that everyone was uh, was winning in that scenario. We do everything win-win. Uh, we don't take advantage of anybody, and we hope that no one ever takes advantage of us. Uh, and so hopefully you can understand that. But, yeah, totally downloadable, and, and uh, you can do it that way. Uh, yes, this will be recorded, Mark, and you can find it within the system. There'll be a new tab called video training. I'm also going to send an email about it Friday or can will. Um, it would be amazing if you get the email address of cash buyers, somewhat how you got them via skip trace. Um, so that is a great uh, point, Michael. It would be amazing if you get the email addresses for cash buyers. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, it's not, not a whole lot of people are reporting that to public record at the time, but you can use uh, systems like our unlimited skip trace.com or any other skip trace service to take that uh, cash buyers information, and go get the email addresses. Um, you know, I've seen it done before where uh, we've had someone who subs subscribed to the cash buyer data feed and they went into unlimited skip trace.com, which is our skip tracing service, one of them, and they would run the cash buyers there, get the email addresses, and then they could start emailing them to get the data too. Uh, so that's an act that that is one step that you can do. Um, we just fortunately we can't provide that data within the system yet. Can you add your logo to the templates? We're actually uh, yes, and we are going to be coming out. And in fact, if you're watching this video now and it's already on the system, it might already be there uh, for the ability to create your own 100% customizable template, so you can add things like logos, images, all that kind of stuff. Do we need to be careful where and how we contact cash buyers to prevent violating SEC laws? That's a great question. Um, I would say that as far as I've heard, I'm no attorney. I'm not paid to pretend like I'm an attorney on TV, so this is not legal advice. In fact, this is purely educational and entertainment purposes only, blah, 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 blah. I don't think you have to worry about it for cash buyers. If you ask me that question about private lenders, I would say there are a set of rules and regulations you need to follow. And that's why when you're a member of the private lender data feed, uh, we give you an SEC compliance manual that you're able to read and, 
and learn everything there is to know so you don't ever accidentally cross a line with cash buyers. Uh, I mean, I can't think of any examples of how you might cross that line, but I'm sure there is one. I just can't think of one, so I think you're pretty safe. But again, I'm no lawyer. <laughs> uh, the same person just asked that question said, I realize this isn't the private lender site, but how do I prevent breaking the SEC violations? Uh, and I would say read that SEC compliance manual. It's within your private lender site right there. Uh, when you log in, it's, it's within one of the tabs and um, it's not the funnest read ever, but it's short and it'll walk you through things you can and can't say. Uh, and the reason she's asking this is because, you know, if you can, if you um, go out to a bunch of lenders and you, don't properly engage them or give them the right amount of time. You know, you could violate some SEC laws and regulations and then get in a little bit of trouble. But uh, that's why we provide you the information with the private lender feed. But for the cash buyer day feed, I think you're good. Um, question about the heat map and the zooming. They noticed that when they zoom in, it tends to evaporate and the red and yellow and green sort of go away. And the reason that happens is because the way the heat map works is based on distance. So if you're zoomed all the way out, you're going to see a bright red, a hard red. And if you zoom in, it's sort of going within a radius outside and saying within this certain radius, uh, here's the density. Because they're basically density ratios, right? So when you're looking at a, a county, we can say within that county, here are the density ratios. Within this state, here are the density ratios. And as you zoom in, it sort of tightens in that circle. So if you zoom into a really small area, even if it's a busy town, it's looking within three or five mile radius and you may have one or two cash buyers. Well, the ratio for that is very nil. So you're not going to see a red bullet within, or a red hue within that area. Um, so what I suggest is when you're looking at that uh, heat map is to back out a couple zooms um, so that you can see where the the cash buyers are located without zooming into the using the heat map to the very intense degree of that is probably not the best use for it um i i saw the same thing and was a little confused at first but i think uh zooming back out from that a little bit shows you where those cash buyers are uh and and using it that way is probably the best bet having trouble joining teddy says having trouble joining i assume teddy means the actual webinar i apologize teddy you'll be able to watch the video afterwards though when sending direct mail, is it best to drive traffic to my website or to a phone number? Um, I found that both works really well, and that's why in a lot of our pieces, we put both things in there. Uh, and the reason I do that is because some people are uh, website people and some people are phone people. You know, uh, I personally would rather just send an email or have you go to my website and have it automated. But you know, my father-in-law has been investing way longer than I have. would rather just pick up the phone and get it done. You know what I mean? So it just depends on who you are and how you like it coming in. However, I would say this. There's no wrong answer. Um, if you don't want to answer the phone, you're the type of person who just cringes when the phone rings and you do not want to be on the phone, um, just put your website on there and let it all go through your website. Will you get less responses? Maybe. But at least you're getting responses and you're moving forward and you're not stuck on website or phone number. Website or phone number. And I hope that makes sense to you, Abby. had a question on changing the name when using the template mailer of the owner when it's owned by a trust. Uh, I'm not sure you can, uh, although that is a really good um, note. I'm going to actually write that down. So I can give it to our programmer and see what she thinks of that. Our head programmer. That's a great idea. So sorry, Ryan, I can't tell you exactly how to do that right now, but if there's a way, I'll find out and we'll get back to you. And if not, uh, that seems like a really good update to make to the system. And, uh, can you still get into the Seattle Foreclosure Summit? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, if you go there right now and, and register your seat, uh, it's timewithcam.com, Michael. 
Uh, we do still have some space, but it's going to close out soon. We, again, we like to keep it intimate and small. We're not trying to get hundreds of people in the room all at once. Uh, so if you guys are interested, I would highly recommend you go and reserve your seat now. Um, you might be on the edge and be able to get um, discounted room rates too uh, through the hotel we do it at. And uh, you get all that information after you register. Again, it costs nothing, uh, but a seat deposit, that seat deposit is returned the second you show up at the event. Um, and I, I cannot more highly recommend this training for you if you are sick and tired of where your business is at and you need it to go to the next level. Um, so there's that. Uh, will there be a replay? Yes, there will be a replay. Uh, we're going to actually take this recording and stick it in the system so you can watch it anytime you want. A lot of, the, get a lot of that. Uh, how much is the software access after the free trial? It is $49 and change. Um, so the free trial, it's not really free. Uh, you paid a couple bucks for it. Um, we don't do free trials really, but uh, you, you paid a couple bucks to see if you like the system. And we're big believers that, you know, and we have a lot of users who agree uh, that our systems are really well put together. After that 30-day trial period, uh, it is $49 uh, to remain uh, and and still access those cash buyers. And if you think about it, that is a ridiculously low price for what you're getting access to. Um, sorry here. Are these cash buyers wholesalers? Uh, maybe, but, um, but what we're looking at from, from these cash buyers is for them to buy our property. So we're sort of the wholesaler in this part of the equation. And I'm hoping to find a cash buyer who wants to buy my property wholesale. And I make a wholesaling fee, you know, an assignment fee or whatever from that cash buyer. How do you post a property that you want to sell? You wouldn't do it through the cash buyer data feed, Michael. You would do it through greathousedealsonline.com. That's another property site we own, but you can go post your properties to sell there. Uh, not able to attend the first 10 minutes, walk through how to sign up. Sure. If you, By the way, if you don't already have an account for the cash buyer data feed or you're not sure if you do, if you go right now, uh, don't close out the screen, but you go to cashbuyerdatafeed.com. Um, a picture of Cam is going to come up, or video, and he's going to talk to you for a few minutes. But you can click the green button below him, and you can go ahead and sign up for the trial and get into the system within the next two minutes. Uh, it costs you a couple bucks for a trial, or if you've already used a trial, uh, it's $49 a month, and you can cancel at any time. There's no contracts, none of that, no gimmicks. Just, if you like it, you stay, and if you don't, you don't. Um, but Kirk, that's the best I can do. Uh, go to cashbuyerdatafeed.com. You can sign up right there. Okay. Um, yeah, if you want to um, use the mailers and labels or to save your leads, you've got to click the box next to each lead that you want to include in your. So if you're going to send mailers, you got to go choose by clicking the box. Um, Sherry just reminded me that I need to remind you guys that, like I said, it make that clear. When you're looking at your leads within the system, you want to check the box next to those leads, and then you can send a mailer to those leads or save those leads or delete those leads. Um, but you have to select the ones you want to do that first. Do the cash buyer data feed and vacant house data feed both work the same way? I think, John, what you mean is, are they like similar systems? Do they both work in the same way we present the information? And the answer is yes. And, and so does the private lender data feed as well. Um, they all work in very similar ways with a map at the top, the filter features. Um, you can always filter on different information because we're dealing with different types of leads, either the private lenders, cash buyers, or vacant homes. Um, but they all work in a very similar way. We do that because we don't want you to have to learn three different systems. It's learn the way it works and it's easy. You can go from system to system. And if you've got iFlip real estate, which is our CRM platform, our automated deal platform, uh, it works with all of our systems, private lender, cash buyer, vacant house, everything. Uh, and it sort of makes it easy to use all these systems within your business without having to learn 10 different things. If they bought multiple properties, can you see all the properties they have purchased? You can see the properties they've purchased within the last 120 days. Now, 
Uh, if it's after 120 days, the buyer comes off the list because they're no longer new or recent cash buyers. Uh, so it'll be the next time they buy again, if they bought another property, that would go on the list. So if they've bought five or more in the last 120 days, you can see a list of those five within the system. They'll all be within your list as you're in your search area. It's funny to read these questions. I got like Sherry thanking me for an answer that I gave her six minutes ago, but I just now scrolled down to it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great question. Uh, how can you find out which cash buyers like to buy fix and flips and which ones like to buy properties that are good for renting or for buy and holds? The answer to that is ask them. Uh, when they call you because you sent out a mailer or when you call them because you got their phone number with the cash buyer data feed, you just say, I'd like to add to my list. Are you interested? Sure. Well, are you more interested in buying fix and flips? Or are you looking for buy and hold? What type of properties are you uh, interested in flipping or buying? And they'll tell you right there and then. And then you just make a note. Uh, this is <laughs> Tim Brown just got on. Um, we're actually nearing the end. We started at 8 uh, p.m. Eastern, and we are now sitting at 9.25. Uh, but we recorded this whole thing, so you'll be able to watch the entire training. Um, I'm just doing live questions now, so if you have them, pop them in. Oh, no. Michael, is there a filter for that? A filter for what? Um, so the heat map only shows the county and not the zip code that the cash buyer is buying in. Correct. The heat map is by county. And that's not because we didn't want to show it to you the other way. It's just that's how we can get the data parsed together in a way that actually makes sense. Um, yeah, uh, just to make sure we're clear, um, that question about the legal concern for talking to a cash buyer uh, was confused with the legal parameters of talking to a private lender. A cash buyer can be invited to purchase, but a private lender requires speaking only a basic introduction to a seller identity in general. Mm. What's not allowed? I, I, I hate to even read this out loud uh, because the, I don't know that you're a lawyer, and even if you were, I'm not sure everybody else needs to listen. They should pay you for your expertise. What I would say is if you're worried about cash buyers and approaching someone to be a cash buyer and legal ramifications in terms of the SEC, I don't think you have anything to worry about. If you're trying to approach private lenders, I would go read the SEC compliance manual. That's what we tell every single person who ever gets the private lender data feed and or asks us, what are the rules? What can I, what can I cannot say? Um, we've got a good friend who's an SEC attorney and he's spelled out everything in detail inside the private lender data feed there. But thank you, uh, DSP, for pointing that out. What rule of thumb to use for miles out on radius when viewing the cash buyer data feed? Uh, to be honest, I found cash buyers who live hundreds of miles away, but my general rule of thumb is between 40 and 50 miles. Um, that doesn't mean that if you live in an area where there's not a ton within 40 or 50 miles that you won't find them further out, and that happens all the time. Um, but for me, Charleston area, it's within 40 or 50 miles is typically the the size of group that I'm working in. Uh, do you have marketing letters as part of the system? Yes, we do. Inside the uh, marketing tools tab, you'll find letters and postcards right there, Barry, for your use. A couple of these I'll answer privately afterwards. We don't have a filter for buying. They asked, do you have a filter for buy and hold versus fix and flip buyers? Thanks for uh, spelling that out for me, Michael. We don't have that filter because we just don't know. Um, at the time of getting this data, we don't know whether they're buy and hold or fix and flip buyers. Um, that would be up to you to figure out when you call them for your area. Uh, if we knew that, that'd be great. But, you know, when someone buys a property for cash, they don't say, I bought this for buy and hold purposes or I bought this for fix and flip purposes. If we had that information, that'd be great. But we don't. Uh, and I don't think anybody has the ability to give you that because people don't tell you that on the back end. So, um, Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. So that is it on live questions. Um, and one thing to remember, guys, again, you're going to have access to this uh, afterwards. But if you ever have any questions at all, you can call 607-527-6097. Or you can go to info at realestatewealthnetwork.com, email them anytime, or you can do the live chat. Uh, for us. Uh, if if I didn't get to your question, if you would sit on the line, I will answer it privately. There's a couple that I just want to answer privately that uh, were specific in nature. Uh, so I'll get to those privately. I just wanted you guys to know. I will get to them. I appreciate all of your time and attention tonight. I hope you found this useful and valuable. Uh, I always love the chance to get on the phone and or webinar and uh, teach and train and talk. So hopefully you enjoyed it. I appreciate all of your uh, feedback, your questions, and uh, I wish that you guys have a great night, a great weekend, and uh, wish you the best of success. So take care and uh, have a great one.